So Mario just turned 30 and while that's very exciting and you should definitely go reminiscing about your childhood Mario memories, I thought we should also chat about one of the less commonly discussed aspects of everybody's favourite plumber. The fact that he's a total jerk. There's a good chance that Mario would not have been all that close to Peter back in the day, as it seems that whole animal rights movement thing is not all that close to his heart. As uncovered by game theory's Matt Pat, Mario kicks off his reign of animal abuse in 1984's Donkey Kong Circus from the Game & Watch Gallery. The Donkey Kong prequel shows Mario, then referred to as Jumpman, laughing at the ape for failing at juggling pineapples and watching him get scorched by falling fireballs. He's He's also a mega asshole in Donkey Kong Jr., wherein the little monkey needs to try and save his caged up dad from the whip wielding plumber. On top of that, he's shown a pretty massive distaste for wigglers and cheap cheeps among the Mushroom Kingdom's other inhabitants. Neither of these guys are all that interested in hurting Mario, but he destroys their homes, burns them to bits, and stomps them to death anyway. I mean, in Super Mario Sunshine, a wiggler wakes up on the wrong side of the bed, inconveniencing the hatching of a sandbird, and Mario decides the best solution is to force him to topple onto his back so he can crush it in its soft belly and kill it. Not cool, Mario. The abuse doesn't stop there, though. Mario's also a dick to his family members and closest friends. His buddy Yoshi might not actually be a blood family member, but given how much time he spends helping out Mario, he goes through a lot of crap. Yoshi gets smacked in the back of the head and dropped into pits of death in order to help Mario take out enemies and jump higher, while his brother Luigi is constantly relegated to second fiddle. Luigi is expected to tag along and help rescue Mario's girlfriend, who he does a real poor job of keeping track of. Despite Luigi's love and admiration for his brother, which you can see in his secret diary entries in Paper Mario, Luigi rarely gets the recognition and reciprocation he craves. And when he finally gets his own game, it's a bloody edutainment title, where Luigi needs to think about geography, of all things. The next time they give him a shot, the poor guy is sent into a haunted house with nothing but a vacuum cleaner to get the ever-loving shit scared out of him. Way to have your bros back, Mario! There's also been some speculation over whether Mario is helping or hurting the Mushroom Kingdom's trapped toads. The Super Mario Bros. guidebook explains that Bowser turned a whole heap of defenseless toads into blocks scattered around the kingdom. If you've ever played a Mario game, you probably remember Mario breaking blocks left, right and centre, since that's kind of his thing. What we can take away from this is that Mario is not only murdering these toads turned blocks, he's raiding their bodies. I mean, money and power-ups fall out of their corpses. If those blocks are indeed trapped toads, as the game manual suggests, that's pretty damn messed up, Mario. All in all, it seems that Mario is just one of those guys that wants to watch the world burn. Sure, he's out there to save the Mushroom Kingdom from Bowser, but much like the world-saving antics of the Avengers, the place gets kinda busted up in the process. Mario makes his way through the kingdom, pillaging every coin and resource in sight, and killing off the inhabitants, both violent and innocent. I guess he figures as long as he picks up his lady in the final castle, even though he'll inevitably lose her again by the next game, it's all good. We'll always love Mario for shaping our childhoods, but it probably doesn't hurt to realise that like many of our loved ones, he can be a real dick at times. Let me know down in that comment section what you think of Mario, and I will catch you again next week.